Before we begin the video, I just want to acknowledge that this video was filmed on the unceded lands of the Esquimalt and Lekwungen peoples. The family that we're going to be talking about today, the Dunsmeres, took over the land in 1908. However, the history of this land extends much further back than this family owning it, and I would just really like it if you could keep that in mind while watching this video. Thank you. Another note, just before we fully dive into this, is I just want to note that this is actually a collaboration between myself and Emily Scott, otherwise known on Instagram and YouTube as Museums and Emily. Uh, I will make sure that her links and everything end up in the description. Um, today I'm going to be talking about Hatley Castle and kind of the domestic servant side of everything, how they were treated, who were they, and Emily's video is going to be talking a bit more about the opulence and richness of the Dunsmere family. So definitely please go check out her video after you're done watching this one. But without further ado, let's jump into it. For those who aren't aware, Hatley Park is a lovely little plot of land out in Colwood, British Columbia, Canada. It boasts a castle as well as acres of parkland and manicured gardens. Due to its charm, it is a very lovely place to go and have a picnic and just walk around. And because it is just in general a very beautiful place to go, it has acted as a film set for many famous films, including the X-Men series and Deadpool. Before all of this, though, it was the family home to the Dunsmeres. James Dunsmere, the patriarch of the Dunsmere family, was at one point a premier of British Columbia and also served as a lieutenant governor. Due to the nature of his very high political offices, he was retiring as a very wealthy man. As a result, he wanted to build himself a rather lavish retirement home. And so he came to build Hatley Park and Hatley Castle. While James was looking forward to a rather quiet retirement where he would have a few close friends around, plus his family, and he would hunt and he would fish and he would smoke cigars and just kind of live in peace. On the other hand, his American wife, Laura, was quite the socialite and really enjoyed entertaining guests and throwing lavish parties. Now, with the massive amount of land that this castle was built on, not to mention the fact that the castle itself had over 40 rooms, they needed a lot of help in just the general day-to-day -day maintenance. So it should come as no surprise that the Dunsmeres actually employed about 120 people at the most to help run everything that was going on in this property, and let me tell you, there was a lot going on. The castle was the primary building on the property, but there were a ton of other buildings, including a slaughterhouse, a dairy, a stable, a dock, and all of this kind of allowed the property to be self-sufficient. To help run the castle, the Dunsmeres hired 12 servants, a number of maids, as well as an English butler by the name of William Pack. They also employed a governess by the name of Fanny Isom, as well as dozens upon dozens of Chinese laborers who ran the slaughterhouse, the dairy, the laundry, and everything else on the property. And the very interesting thing that I think makes Hatley Park stand out from other large manors in Victoria of this time is that many people didn't just call this place work, but they also called it home. While the maids, footmen, and butler had rooms in the castle proper, the other staff actually had their own homes scattered across the property. And today, if you actually drive through the six miles of roads across the acreage, you will find that all of these buildings are actually still standing, although many have been modernized to kind of fit the needs of the university. For example, the English butler that I mentioned earlier, William Pack, not only had a room in the castle, but he was also given a residence along the lagoon, although today this is used as temporary residence for faculty. The coachman and the chauffeur, as well as their families, were also housed in a combined stables and garage sort of building. Today, this is a multi-purpose teaching space known as the Sherman Gen Building. The dairymen had a house opposite the dairy, which is now known as the Cedar Building, and the numerous Chinese laborers had a small self-contained community not far from the main residences as well. Most of the buildings that you see at Hatley Park are original to the Dunsmere era, although keep in mind that there are a few that were added later in modern times as well as during its use as a military college. As far as how these staff were treated, James and Laura were considered to be very strict yet very fair employers. 
For example, James was very adamant that dinner be served at the exact same time every evening. However, many of the children of staff received birthday presents as well as Christmas gifts and were even invited to the Dunsmuir children's birthday parties. Staff were not encouraged to retire or kind of move on in the same way that they were at other properties during this time, but instead they all were encouraged to stay on with the Dunsmuirs for as long as they wished. I think it goes to show just how good of an employer they were, judging by the cook, a man by the name of Ahoy, who actually stayed with the Dunsmuirs for 50 years. The English butler I mentioned earlier, William Pack, also worked for three decades for the Dunsmuirs and was even mentioned in Laura Dunsmuir's final will and testament when she died. As there were so many staff on site and you essentially had a small community going, it is no surprise that a number of children were born and a number of marriages occurred on site, especially right before the onset of World War I. The documentary evidence, I feel like, really drives home just how happy a lot of people who worked here were. Just judging by the fact that there are photographs of the domestic staff, which is not as kind of unheard of, and in all of the pictures everybody is kind of having a candid laugh, or, you know, they're all there's a bunch of people going for tea or having a picnic on the beach. I think it just goes to show just how well treated these people were which is really, really nice to hear considering some of the horror stories you hear from other domestic staff and other houses in the same area in the same time. So it's, it's really heartwarming to see that this was, this was a happy house to be working in. I think that if you were a domestic staff person to be working at this castle in this time, I think that you would have gotten very lucky to have gotten hired by the Dunsmuirs. So that is the kind of quick summary of the staff at Hatley Castle, the kind of untold story of just how well the Dunsmuirs treated their staff and just who many of these staff were. There are a ton of names that I didn't mention and I didn't have a chance to get to in this video, so I highly encourage you to check out the website and some of the blog posts that I'm going to put down in the description. Please also keep in mind that this is a collaboration. Emily has a lovely video about the Scottish influence and the kind of opulence of the Dunsmuir family. I highly recommend that you check it out after this video. I will also make sure that that gets put in the cards or in the description down below. There is a ton of reading to be done if you're curious about Hatley Castle, so definitely check out those blog posts. I also want to take a quick second to say thank you to Jenny from the archives at Hatley Park. Uh, you were absolutely instrumental and provided many of the photos that were seen in this that are not yet available online. So thank you Jenny for all of your help and all of your information. This video would not be half as interesting without your help. Uh, if you ever are in Victoria or if you live here and you haven't been, I highly recommend that you go to Hatley Castle and Hatley Park and just take a wander through the property as it is quite beautiful and well maintained. It's also right by Esquimalt Lagoon, so there's lots of really, really good picnic spots. But I hope that you enjoyed this video and learning a little bit more about the domestic staff of Hatley Park, and I hope that you stick around for my next video, so make sure that you subscribe and all that jazz. But um, until next time.